Lubbock City Councilman Mark McBrayer says he is hopeful financial relief could be on the way for property owners. This is an update to our ordinance outrage investigation. Last night we told you more council members have agreed to revisit an unpopular ordinance that has left property owners out of thousands of dollars in plumbing bills. It's news McBrayer tells our investigative reporter Shaley Kidwell he is happy to hear. An amendment that received unanimous approval from Lubbock City Council is now under review by a growing number of council members. It's probably one of the biggest issues that I hear about. If we get something wrong, we need to be willing to admit that we got it wrong. Um, I mean, that's what accountability to me for an elected official is all about. We're not above going back and looking at things and making sure that we uh, make it right for everybody. The the ramifications of it were not, they really were not talked about. I just went, no, this is wrong. We, we have to fix this. Yes, Property owners have always been responsible for work to their private sewer lateral lines within their fence line, but since 2006, city crews have handled repairs to those lines in public rights of way like streets and alleys. Last year, city staff suggested council change the ordinance to require property owners to hire a city approved contractor to complete the work in those public rights of way. I think this is a benefit to the consumer. There's no longer now that lag or that gap where the plumber's working on one side, we're scheduling a crew to come and work on the other side. We do estimate this to produce about an $800,000 savings to our operations. A cost-saving measure for the city that property owners are now picking up. Ten dollars to $15,000 is kind of the estimate that I had been hearing. I got the estimate in, and that's, you know, $6,500. They came out and told me it was going to be $3,500. In our first report, we took citizens' complaints to Councilman and Mayoral Candidate Mark McBrayer. Yeah, I'll ask us to revisit it. So we need to be responsible with how we address that issue and not unnecessarily push problems off on the homeowner. We also spoke with Councilman and Mayoral Candidate Steve Massengill. The, the cost of that last piece of the line, that small piece of the line, is it should your neighbor pay for that or should you pay for that? And at the end of the day, it's the property owner's line, and I think that's why I can justify supporting the policy change. Shortly after our story aired, Massengill announced he and Councilwoman Latrell Joy would look into revising the ordinance. What's changed since uh, we've talked and your story ran is I've seen some of the invoices and some of the cost impact to our citizens and also have seen great disparity in the prices uh, given to some of those citizens uh, when they need that work done. McBrayer says with more council members in favor of revisiting the ordinance, property owners have a better chance of seeing financial relief. I'm glad at this point that other city council people, Steve and, and Latrell, have said, yes, we need to take another look at it. Last month, we introduced you to homeowner Zeke Patton, who was already out money to replace the line in his backyard when he learned he would have to pay for the alley work, too. Eight foot of alley work is more expensive than the whole inside line. He says his plumber had a theory on what caused the issue. Uh, cause was not actually the sewer tap itself, but the lateral line that was connected to the sewer line where the uh, dump truck drives over it and the uh, settlement over the years has caused it to where it's no longer a downgrade on it. It uh, has a portion of it that flows uphill, which is preventing the sewer line from completely draining. He says the work in the right-of-way cost him $3,500. Patton says he filed a claim with the city of Lubbock, but received this letter, which states, the city's investigation determined the damage did not arise from an employee's use of a motor-driven vehicle or motor-driven equipment. Therefore, the city would be unable to make a payment. While a revised ordinance would help property owners in the future, council members tell us they also need to address those like Patton, who are out thousands of dollars. I think we need to look at that and see if, if we can't somehow make them whole. McBrayer agrees. If, if we made a mistake, we can't let these people who got caught in that gap pay for our mistake. Uh, you know, I don't want people taking advantage of people because of that situation and when the city can control that cost. Another consideration, those neighborhoods that don't have alleys. So property owners' sewer lines run under the street. But how many different contractors do you be one out there working on your city streets? streets? Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, I mean, that's, that's another thing. I think the city has a real interest in controlling that process. I don't think you want a bunch of different people working on that. You want to be in control of that to make sure that the streets are put back uh, in the same condition um, that they were in before you did that work. We're told the council will revisit the ordinance at Tuesday's meeting. This may be a moot point depending on what the council decides to do, but service line coverage does exist. This is typically a specialized type of coverage in residential property insurance. According to the Office of Public Insurance Council, companies often offer service line coverage as a limited amount with a special deductible. For example, $10,000 of coverage with a $500 deductible. Talk to your agent or a company to learn more about their service line coverage options. But before you make any decision, you may want to wait to see what the council plans to do. Abner.